So here we go, everybody. We are looking at the brand new demo of Fairy Tale. Andy, I'm very excited about this. Oh, this is already looking cool. Like, you know, some, some really nice vistas here. Finally in the land of, in the, the town of Crocus as well. So this is like a really nice kind of majestic town in the middle of Fior. So we're going to get to do the Grand Magic Game Tournament. So hopefully we can show you guys some exciting battles as well during the, during the gameplay. Cool. So, so how deep into the game are we here? How, how far in are we? So, so far, we're probably about two to three hours in. Uh, the beginning of the game starts at the end of the Temu Island arc, just before the seven-year time skip. Mm. And then as you start playing the game um, after the tutorial, you're about two to three hours in. So you're not too far into the game so far. This is quite early. And uh, the guild have just done all their training, and we've unlocked some new abilities, which would be perfect for battle. And uh, we're all kind of coming together now. So we'll have some of the later on characters like Juvia and uh, Kajil in our party already. Got to love a bit of Juvia and just her, her passionate love for Grey. I'm glad we've actually got a section of this uh, in Crocus today we can show you as well. I, I love their relationship. It's, <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> so I mean, guess what? One thing that's standing out straight away here is this sounds like all of the original Japanese voice cast. Is that is that correct? Yes, the Japanese voice cast have returned, so the game will be Japanese audio and English and French subs, so people can enjoy the original Japanese cast as they were in the anime series. Fantastic. I love the uh, the animations on the faces. Just, they're, they're adorable. Some of the reactions that he pulls later on are, are hilarious. <laughs> I've got to say, just, just in general, it just looks fantastic. Look at that. It's really pretty. It does kind of feel like you've just opened a page of the manga and it's come to life quite realistically, like a pop-up book almost. Mm. Oh, so we're on the move. Where are we heading to, then? We are going to go to the kind of the lodgings for the for the Grand Magic Games. This kind of acts like the guild, but a portable guild as such. So as you can see, it's got all the typical features in, like the bar, and it will have a request board where you can get some of our quests from. For now, we won't have to worry about this too much as we lead into the Grand Magic Games, as we'll be taking part of the main tournament. Uh, mm. But before we get into that, we get to talk to some of the characters, like Mira Jane, which I know is a, a fan favorite for sure. No, I need and she'll be part of the party throughout the game as well. So Mira Jane is fully playable later on. How, how many playable characters are there in the game in total? There are 16 playable characters in the game. Uh, so there's, there's oh, I could go through a list, but essentially most of them are from uh, Fairy Tale, and they do have some from the other guilds throughout Fiora as well. Fantastic. And one would assume as well you can change those parties throughout the game and such as needed. Yes, yeah, so you have a party of up to five. And you can switch these out as you feel fit. Uh, throughout the story, you will kind of have set characters which you'll need to have in your team. For example, now in the Grand Magic Games, we'll be set to the five party members that go into the games. Uh, but later on, you can have an all-girls team, an all-guys team. You can have a non fairy tale team. It's, it's really what you want to do and how you want to customize your, your magic in your team. Fantastic. Okay, so... I think after this, we can go walk around Crocus and we can look at some of the character events. So character events are quite an important part of fairy tale. While uh, there's all the battles and the kind of the plot that we usually experience in the anime, you can also bond with your characters outside of these events and deepen your relationships with some new and original conversations, which were never in the anime manga. So almost in, in some ways, it's almost like fleshing out the details even more. Yeah, it's really nice. Like fairy tale fans will find new stuff in here, but it's also going to be intertwined into the main original fairy tale plot. So all of this is going to come together really nicely. Excellent. And one thing I, I do want to highlight, just from a personal perspective, I, I love how everything is labelled in the game, personally. Like, just you wandering around into into this guild and then sort of just seeing the icons as you were going up to Makarov there. The, just the way everything is labelled is really clear, and I really like that. It's really nice. It's to make sure that, because obviously some of the anime fans might have not been too accustomed to some of the more recent JRPGs, so it's really to make sure everyone feels welcome and can enjoy this fairytale experience together, really. Mm, yeah, because these kind of games can be quite daunting. Like, you know, where do I go? What do I do next? And it, it's really good to see a game that, that labels that and makes it clear, you know, what, what there is to do and, and where you need to go to do it. Yeah, when there's a lot to do, it's, it's definitely nice to have their features put into the game. So just after this, we'll be able to explore Crocus. Uh, all the events in the game, you'll probably recognize from the anime, they've been kind of reimagined in the 3D character engine, which is, they look really nice. I like how the characters come to life in these cutscenes. I love Makarov's voice. Makarov's voice is so majestic. <laughs> I love him so much. He's so small and so adorable, but he's so powerful. Okay, so we've got our team of five. Lucy, Wendy, Natsu, Grey, and Urza for the game. So that'll be the, the team we have for now throughout the build. Perfect. 
So out of interest, it says autoplay off there in the corner. Is that to imply then that the, that the dialogue would just carry on as is, as though it were just playing naturally if you have that selected as off? Yeah, so you can you can turn autoplay on and the text would just keep reading itself essentially. So the characters will talk and then the text box will continue. Uh, you could also go back through the message log if you've missed anything for some reason throughout the text. At the moment, we'll just progress it. Progress it normally for now, but you can turn it on if you prefer to have the Japanese audio continue itself. Okay, so I should point out before we go and explore in the, in the Crocus Town that some of the character events have been removed from this build so far because it's still in development. But mm. later on, uh, you will see a lot more character events in the final game. So don't expect this to be how many are in the final game. There will be a lot more in the full game when it comes out in July. Very much giving people a taste of what to expect. Yes, just a little teaser today before we go to the Grand Magic Games. But there's some really cool cutscenes. I think the fans will be really excited with some of the uh, the junior appearances that will be making place today. <laughs> and again, just to, just to sort of re-emphasize how everything's displayed here, I just love how clear and concise it is. It's really easy to get. Yeah, and in the top left, you'll always get all your objectives. So you'll always know where to go and what you should be doing. And on the mini map at the bottom right, as you'll see, you'll also get the little book objectives. And that, that's exactly where your objectives take place on the map. So you'll always find a very clear way of knowing where you should be going and how you should progress to the next chapter. Okay. So if we go over here, we can look at the central part of the town. But I think we'll also bump into Grey in just a second. And throughout the game, you can play as other team members. You don't just have to play as Natsu on the overworld. You can play as Grey, Urza, Wendy. Here we go. The wonderful Juvia. <laughs> She's so adorable. Her love is so strong. And of course, Grey has his priorities in order, you know. Grey is hungry, and that's all he wants. He just wants his food. <laughs> So throughout the game, you'll also have these guest characters such as Leon. Uh, you won't be able to play as Leon specifically in the game, but guest characters can join you in battle during key moments and the computer will take over as them and perform different magic abilities. Mm. This way you get to experience some other guild members as part of your team as you progress through the story. Oh, great. One day you'll get it. Uh, one day, one day. It, it feels like there's some really good, strong kind of fairy tale writing here. Like, it, it feels like it, it's capturing the tone of, of the, the series and the manga pretty well here. There's plenty of moments like this throughout the series. Even people that maybe haven't witnessed fairy tale before will really be able to understand the magic of fairy tale within this game without having previously read the manga or watched the anime. <laughs> oh, I love Juvia. One day, one day she'll get with Grey. One day. So, so I, I mentioned, I saw a mention there of like uh, changing hairstyles and stuff. Is there is there a bunch of like outfit and character customization in here as well? Uh, there is. So throughout different parts of the game, you'll unlock different costumes like we just did. And when you go to Lucy's room in Magnolia, you can change some of your costumes, rewatch cutscenes. It's kind of like the options room almost. You can kind of edit things and change what you're wearing. Uh, for now, we can't access that feature just yet, but later on in the game, you'll be able to access that. Awesome. I, I can hear the fairy tale cosplayers getting excited about that from here. <laughs> There'll be a lot of choice for them to muck around with. Okay, so I think we're gonna go into our first battle now. Ah, excellent. I look forward to showing you. So Fairy Tale actually takes place on a turn-based battle system. I think a lot of people originally thought it'd be a warrior style, but this is very much a JRPG style game. Mm. So it'll be a turn-based battle system. Okay, let's let's beat up these thugs. These guys seem like they're up to no good in town. So we'll take these guys out. Work your magic, Nathan. We, we, we believe in you. Oh, let's, let's hope I can do it. Okay, so on the screen, you'll see you've got a variety of abilities, but magic is going to be the main one you want to use. Uh, MP bar doesn't actually go down as much as you think, so using magic is definitely something you want to keep doing for battle. So Lucy's got her celestial magic, where she can summon the gatekeepers. Get Leo's first appearance. And you notice that each attack has a different grid layout. So these grid layouts allow you to kind of strategically take out enemies. And if you hit them, they might fall back into that grid spacing. So you can kind of move enemies around as you're fighting them to get them into better positions to wipe them out. Okay, so there's, there's, there's quite a tactical element to this. It's not just kind of picking the right attack for the right enemy. It feels like there's quite a kind of depth to the, the actual battle system. Exactly. And you'll, you'll get your standard weakness types for enemies, but you'll also get to add that on top of this kind of more strategic element of trying to nudge enemies back into the right places. 
As you saw there, that battle was quite an easier one. These were kind of just low level enemies, but as you go through the game, there'll be very, very hard boss fights and kind of easier enemies to take out. But, but even just from that, like we could see like the wealth of potential attacks you had on offer there. So I can imagine this is going to get quite deep in terms of what you can do to, to extra enemies and such. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of new abilities, uh, such as new magic, kind of new powerful attacks, and we can use them later on. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to show one of them off today, but there's one unison raids where team members can kind of do an ultimate attack together. Oh, wow. It's, it's really epic magic, and a cutscene that plays at the end is, is stunning. It's great. But we're a little bit too early to uh, use that magic just today. Okay, so in the hub, we can do our kind of basic fairy tale guild features. We'll leave them out for now, just so we can progress with the story. But you'll be able to buy items, upgrade your magic with Lacrima, and you're also going to be able to drink some different drinks for status effects to help you within the build a little bit. And in the final actual guild itself, when you're not in Crocus, you'll be able to upgrade the Fairy Tale Guild at the end of the Temru Island arc. It becomes a shack, as you guys probably remember, like a little shed they move into more than a guild hall. And you get to upgrade that throughout the story. So it starts at a really nice point in the plot where Fairy Tale are trying to build up from nothing back up to the full majestic guild they once were seven years before Temru Island. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's that's quite a smart decision because I, I think some kind of anime style games like have a struggle because, you know, you always kind of have your sort of overpowered protagonist, etc. And like, how do you make that interesting in, in a kind of video game format? So kind of starting from that point and having that as, as a setup is, uh, is a really good way of, of kind of letting you build up through that game and kind of build up power as you go along. Yeah, it's a really nice story part as well, especially because you get to go into something like the Grand Magic Tournament quite early. It's nice you get to dive into the action quite soon instead of having to wait for it to build into the action. And also you get to experience a lot of characters as well, which is great. Yes, all the characters are pretty much together at this point, so it's nice to have them all part of the team. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I think we've all played RPGs where people kind of recommend it to you and say it gets good after 40 hours. Um, so it's kind of nice <laughs> to have something that, that kind of, you know, get, gets you straight in there. Dive straight into the action. Actually, the way the, the game starts on Temeru Island is the tutorial. You do get to play the kind of whole Hades fight as well. So oh, it is, you, you dive straight into that action from the second you bit of the game, which is awesome. Okay, so there's 113 teams going to compete for the Grand Magic Games, and we have to do a race to get there as one of the eight teams to get in first. Exactly like it was in the anime. If there's any kind of qualifier I hate in life in general, it's a race. Because I don't want to have to race. <laughs> A battle race is also something very different. Fighting enemies and running at the same time is too much for me. I don't think I can do that in real life. This, this is why we have video games. <laughs> so we can do it from our couches. Oh, that's the, that's the kind of race I like, a couch race. And I love the happy is there, just in the, in the corner of the screen. Happy is one of my favorite characters. I'm so glad he made an appearance. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go take on the Sky Labyrinth. So we're going to have a lot of battles to take on now. So I can show you some of the more intricate details of the battle system now. Okie dokie. But we're missing Wendy, which is not good. So we're going to have to maybe go with someone else for now. Oh, <laughs> He's so manly, I love it. Look at those abs. In fact, actually, yeah, look at those abs. Look how, def look how defined they are. Wow. I mean, he's just really nice hench. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 yeah I'm, I'm just more drinking how tall he is. Like, it kind of uh, somehow seeing it in this form is like, oh, yeah, he's like twice the size of everyone else. Here. I don't think I ever realized how tall he was in the anime, actually. <laughs> okay, let's go, Team Peritop. So throughout the story, as we mentioned earlier, you'll have different party members join. So at the moment, Wendy has just left our team, but throughout the game, you'll have different team members come in and out as the story makes it appropriate. Hmm. Okay, right. We're going to go straight into the battle. We've skipped some of the character events there that lead into this, just so we can kind of get into the meat of the gameplay. Okay, right. Let's go back into battle. So you can see in the bottom right, we have a gauge with the fairy tale logo, kind of like an orange bar that's almost filling up. Mm. As we attack enemies, this gauge fills up and it's the fairy gauge. And it allows us to do a special magic combo attack afterwards. But all of our uh, team come together and use their own abilities one after another to wipe out a group of enemies at once. And that's what you referred to earlier, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to come to that in a little bit. Hopefully in two or three more attacks, we can use it. But that's what I was on about earlier. So it's a really nice way of allowing the team members to kind of shine like they do in the series. Mm. Take out these guys. As you can see there, we got a knockback, and that's kind of when the enemy falls back into place. 
Yeah, it just it was interesting there when you were sort of selecting the attack for Natsu there. I was looking more at like the, the menu and you can see it there, like how it tells you the range of the attack. It's really clear and concise to, to know how good the ability is. Yes, you get everything from enemy weaknesses or strength to also where it's going to be on the chart, what it might inflict on enemies. So you'll know everything the second you go to uh, select that attack. I love great magic. But the magic really does come to life. It really feels like you're watching a scene out of the series. The magic feels really, really alive. Yeah, yeah, there's a really dynamic presentation to all of this that, that really sells you on it. Natsu Always got to finish. <laughs> Always got to finish with an Atsu attack. And as we level up, you'll unlock new magic abilities. You have to strengthen your attack, defense, magic. Mm. I mean, the other thing that strikes me about this is kind of how kind of rapid everything is like i think some people have the idea that any kind of like turn-based sort of strategy battles like this you know oh it's it's really slow and it's really clunky but like there's a real kind of pace to to these battles like they they kind of they, they map out really quickly in, in a way that's kind of satisfying as well yeah it does just really feel very fast paced and kind of like you're in the battle itself with the magic attacks happening get capricorn out this time we'll change some of our magic abilities up you're not joking, that was a knockback. <laughs> <laughs> so you see on the left here, we have like the resist icon with the down arrow. Mm. So enemies will resist that attack, so they're not going to not gonna take much damage from these ones. It's quite nicely labeled, so you can easily work out what attacks are best to use at the time. Yes, I've been waiting to use this. There we go. <laughs> And different MP, you notice different attacks take up different MP. MP does refresh after each attack. So you might notice at the end of a round, the team are refilling their MP gauges. Okay. So MP, while you might have to use items at some points in the game to refresh that, it will also kind of auto refill the bar throughout the game as well. These guys are healing, which is never good. So let's take them out with something a bit more powerful. So we're going to use Aquarius. So this is kind of another one of the moments which really kind of nods to the fans of the series. Lucy usually gets washed up with an Aquarius' attacks. Mm. And uh, you're going to see that here, as you always do in the series. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> it's little touches like that that just really stand out and set it apart from other games as well. It's, it's really nice. It's just that nice kind of little laugh moment. You're like a really serious battle situation, trying to make sure you're winning, and then you get that little comedic touch at the end. <laughs> And of course, you can use attacks to defend yourself as well, such as shield attacks, which Grey has. As you progress through the game, these will get more powerful to help you defend your whole team, not just Grey himself. Ah, Natsu came in for a combo attack there, which is nice. If you have your uh, your MP bar full enough with the awakening oh, gauge, you can combo in. <laughs> so here we go. This is our ultimate attack. So hopefully, here we go. We'll finish up with Urza. So this magic combo attack allows all your teams to come together at once and have this ultimate powerful <laughs> attack. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even I wasn't even controlling that, and that felt really satisfying. <laughs> so I imagine actually playing that is is quite a thing. It's great. Mag magic chains in the game, as we call them, they're they're kind of the most powerful attack you can use when you have your fairy gauge for. But unison raids take that another step further and just have two characters doing that. So it's it's really cool to see these different magic abilities that get used. Hmm. I really like the way it introduced that about to happen as well, like having sort of like the, the character image pop up on the screen in the corner, almost like it's been torn out of the page. It was, it was really nice. And the cool thing as well about it, I didn't really show it off there, is that you can actually choose if you want to use an attack or if you want to just finish on a second character. So you don't have to bring your whole team into that attack at any point. So, so what you're saying is you don't have to give everyone the glory. <laughs> you don't. If, if for some reason you wanted Natsu to sit back once, you could just have Urza, Lucy and Grey have a go and then finish on Grey. <laughs> Natsu doesn't need all the limelight. <laughs> well, check out the stadium, man. So here we are at the Grand Magic Games. And we have made it. We are one of the teams to arrive at the tournament. I love how alive the scene feels. I've seen this a few times in early development builds. It, it just feels so alive, the scene, when you're in the tournament area. Yeah, this visual right now just, just looks fantastic. And all the little kind of manga touches of like the uh, sound effects really makes it feel like a comic book come to life. Mm. The fairy tale aren't maybe the best lights right now. They are usually coming last at the Grand Magic Games tournament. 
We're going to change that. We're now powerful. We've had seven years out of action. But I'm sure we'll be able to give everyone a, a ride and get some money out of this. Hopefully returning to guild. If anything, you don't want to cross Makarov with that glare he was just giving everyone there. So Makarov is a scary guy. You don't ever want to... Uh, not, not impress Makarov. Here we go. But we also get Mavis to join us as well for this uh, part of the game. Love Mavis. She's so adorable. I love that First Masters, this just kind of cutesy girl. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a scary glaze you don't want to be part of. Okay, so it's not just fairy tale part of the guild. We're also going to be seeing some other members, which throughout the game might appear as guest characters, which will be part of the team to help you battle alongside. So Kagura, I'm sure everyone realizes Kagura from Mermaid Hill. She's quite a, a fan favorite. I'm going to be honest, Mermaid Hill is like my favorite name, just in general. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Ichi, I think Ichi might be my favorite oh, character. <laughs> it's just his really cool poses. <laughs> I wish I could be as cool as Ichio one day. That's the dream. We have Sherry and Leon from Lamia Scale. And again, all these characters introduced will be uh, joining Fairy Tale part of the game as guest characters to help fight in different tournaments. Hmm. I won't spoil what happens past the Grand Magic Games too much. Oh, this is just really building up. I just really want to play this now. <laughs> you a really good job of teasing this. <laughs> what I love as well is that this is kind of like quite an early part of the game, so there's so much more epic and action oriented stuff to come later on. And this is kind of the first big build up in Fairy Tale. Hmm. There'll be tons of events for fans to really dive, in, dive their teeth into a little bit. Also, I've got to say that the soundtrack to this is phenomenal as well. It's really getting me pumped. It's really good, isn't it? It, it really has that feel of fairy tale in the background. It really feels like you're watching the anime. Hmm. Um, it isn't the same soundtrack as from the series. It is an original soundtrack the team have made. Hmm. But it really has that same kind of feeling to it. <laughs> <laughs> that reaction from Natsu then, sorry. <laughs> I love these facial reactions. They really bring it to life that little bit more. <laughs> so we're going to have to fight some of our fellow fairy tale comrades in this tournament. It's still listening to this music just a little bit more there, it is really just getting it pumped. And the fact, like you said, it, it, it is an, almost an original soundtrack for the game, but still feels so much like Fairy Tale. It's really, really good. Really nice. Of course, Natsu's going to give him a word. He wants to be the number one. I expect nothing less. You wouldn't expect anything less from Natsu. <laughs> And of course, the X-Seeds make their appearance throughout the game, too. Mm-hmm. And our final team is Sabertooth, the Grand Magic Games. <laughs> Love the announcer. <laughs> Mato's voice is just so good. I wonder if it's a real pumpkin on his head, if that's part of his anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to know these things, Nathan. I know. I don't want to judge him for who he is. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are going to be our true competition throughout this tournament as the strongest guild in FIFA. But hopefully, hopefully. Look at Frosh. I love Frosh. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, guys, that is probably all we have to show today. We're going to have to end it here. We'll give you some more soon. Very soon.